He single-handedly killed 600 men with something like this. <sighs> now, if that's not a can-do attitude, I don't know what is. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back. I am Jason. Shamgar is a character in the Bible that killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad, which is basically just a sharp stick. <laughs> My buddy Nathan presented this idea to me and he said we should have some sort of, of award for one of our buddies, the guys in our group, if they, if they display some sort of can-do attitude. Winners find a way mentality, a stick to it type idea. If they can display something awesome and, and get a big job done with very, very little resources, then we should be able to present them with some sort of trophy. And it's going to be an ox goad. <laughs> Got my old draw knife here. It just needs a little bit of love here, a little bit of touching up. Gonna take a diamond stone to it real quick and just touch up the edge. You want your draw knife to be extra sharp because if it's not, it will it will splinter the wood. It will tear off big chunks of the wood that you don't want and it won't do the fine shavings that you're looking for. I've got a broken tool handle here. This is a piece of hickory, I believe, and I'm going to fashion this thing into an ox goad. So this was a tool that was used basically to prod an, an ox to get it to go in the direction that you want, to keep it pulling the plow or whatever it is that you're, you're doing with your ox. And uh, there, I looked up pictures of them and there's lots of different versions of these. Some of them were just long sticks, basically. Some were sh relatively short with just pointy ends on them. Some of them were kind of like clubs. So I figured I would just put my own creative spin on this thing and turn it into something awesome. I'm a little bit nervous that this is going to split, but I want it to be a really snug fit without adhesives and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to see what happens. Here. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I'll show you what I'm doing with this here in just a minute. You'll see where I'm going. So I've always been fascinated with you know, stories of survival and, and people doing incredible things that are beyond what most people's expectations of what a human can do. I've always been fascinated by that, and that's one reason why I've always enjoyed kind of pushing my limits and, and testing myself and pushing the boundaries and stuff like that. I just think I just think it's fascinating to see what people are actually capable of when they're when they're pushed up against a wall, when you have to find a way. You know, there's no other option. You can't just say, oh well, I don't have the thing. I don't have I don't have my, uh, my ox goad. I can't slay the 600 men. You, f you pick up another stick and you figure it out, right? <laughs> it's just, that's what it's all about. That really is the most important survival skill. It's not, you know, starting the fires and wielding the knives and making the traps and all that stuff. Well, it's, I'm not discounting it. I'm not saying it's not important, but your mentality, your mindset, being able to stay positive when the chips are down, when you're cold, you're wet, you're tired, you're you're up against a, a a force that you can't win, you know, or at least you can't, you don't think you can win. It's staying positive in that in that uh, at that time, staying positive, keeping a positive mindset, being able to crack a smile and and uh, tell a joke and get the, get the guys around you laughing even when things are miserable. That is the most important survival skill in my opinion. You know, when I was, um, when I was a kid, you know, in school, even up, up into high school, I was a quitter. You know, I, I, would, I would give up when things got hard. And not all the time, I guess, but I, I remember being the type of person that when things got difficult, I just caved and I gave up. And then somewhere around college, I would say, you know, 
college and then into my uh, uh, adulthood when I started become, having, getting a real job and having to take care of myself. And, and I decided one day that that wasn't going to be me anymore. I wasn't going to live my life like that. I wasn't going to be a quitter. I wasn't going to I wasn't going to fold. I wasn't going to give up when things got difficult. I was going to find a way. And that's when I started saying, you know, winners find a way. And anybody that knows me can tell you that I say that a lot. And I just feel like giving up is never really an option. We can always figure out a way to make something happen. Regardless of how big the project is or how difficult it may seem, we can always make it happen. Regardless of the survival situation that you are in, you can always figure it out. And that's, and that's one reason why I don't worry so much. A lot of a lot of prepper channels and survival channels and stuff, they're always preaching the doom and gloom, right? That it's all going to come to an end and there's nothing you could do. You're going to die unless you do all this, you know? And, and I'm just not of that mindset. I don't live my life in fear. I don't live my life worrying about stuff that, you know, potentially I can't control. And I don't worry myself to death because I will find a way. I will figure it out no matter what. And now, whether, and now whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, you know, when the zombies come, maybe I, I don't find a way and I end up getting my brains eaten, you know, but it doesn't matter if, if I go into it with a quitter, loser mindset, that's what's going to happen. If I go into this scenario, if I go into this situation, whatever it may be, with a winner's mindset saying, I will figure this thing out and I will take this cattle prod and I will I will beat my way out of that out of that zombie horde. That's the mindset that you have to have if you want to survive. I think we all need to surround ourselves with people, like-minded individuals that are winners, right? That are can doers, that are uh, stick to it type of individuals, people that don't give up when things get difficult. If we surround ourselves with those type of people, most likely you're going to end up being one of those people as well. And I think we need to not just give up on those people that have that, have that mindset of, you know, life's too hard, I give up. Don't give up on those people. Always be encouraging the people around you to, to uh, find a way. But if you're in a circle of people that always seem to quit, that always seem to give up, that never really push, that never really challenge themselves, or they're not challenging you, if you're surrounded by those type of people, you need to you need to make some changes because you will never go anywhere. You'll never amount to much. You'll never accomplish anything if you surround if you're constantly surrounded by people that tell you that you can't. My whole life I've been told by family and and, and by and friends and people that, that tell me, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's stupid or that's dangerous or or I would never do that. What they're saying is they would never do it because because they're too afraid, most likely. They would never do that because it's too hard for them. Don't listen to that nonsense. Don't listen to that crap. And finding these people now, surrounding yourself with good quality people, doers of good, surrounding yourself with these people is, is so important to do now. You can't wait. Because when times get tough, it's going to be really, really hard to have uh, weeded out the good from the bad, basically. And I'm not saying, you know that it can't be done after the fact, but when times are good, that's when you can start looking for those individuals that you can count on. When you call them, when they show up, do they do what they say they're gonna do? Are they tough? Can they handle stress? Can they handle pressure? Or will they buckle and fold and give up? If Shamgar were here right now, I wonder what he'd think of this. Would he be proud? <laughs> and like I always say, I, I'll take, I'll take a, a novice, a beginner, someone that doesn't know anything, has almost no skills whatsoever, but has a positive, upbeat, can-do type attitude. I'll take that guy every single time over the expert that's just always, you know, gloom and doom and, and just a negative Nancy, you know? It, those types of people, those types of people will drag you down and they'll drag everyone around you down. Take, next time you're in a, in a group of guys, you know, take a look around and, and kind of assess who's who in that situation, in that dynamic. Is there somebody that complains a lot? Do you notice that when that person complains that it, that it brings the whole crowd down, it brings everybody down? 
Start separating yourself. It's difficult. I understand you might have, you might be have been friends with these people for a long, long time. And I'm not saying give up on them completely and don't encourage them to improve and get better. But you need to separate yourself at least to some degree so that you can continue to grow and not be pulled down by those types of people. One of my best friends is, is a super good dude. He, uh, he always has a smile on his face, you know, and you know, maybe, you know, I, I love the guy and he'll tell you, he'll be the first one to tell you he's not the fastest, the strongest, the, the best shooter, any of that stuff. But, but that's not what matters that I would pick him to be on my team every single time because of his mindset. It doesn't matter how much pain he's in, you know, he's got some back issues and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. He's always got this little this little smirk going on. And I love talking to him about stuff because he's because he's so positive about things and he says he says, you know, the end, there's nothing to fear from the end of the world, you know. When the when the SHTF happens, we're going to we're going to figure it out. That's what he says. So a little smile on his face. He's like, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> and and I love that. That's just that's why I like being around him is because we will, you know, with guys like him, we will figure it out. <laughs> That's the thing about tools too. Don't let people tell you that you have to have this thing in order to do this thing. Don't let people tell you you have to have the fanciest, latest and greatest, otherwise it's not even worth doing. You know, people throughout history have figured ways out of accomplishing the same goal a thousand different ways. Now for the fun part. Let's get this baby in there. Spice this thing up a bit. Sure, maybe it's not historically accurate, but it's gonna be awesome. Safety first, you know how I do. All right, we've got a nice contoured handle right here, which I thought about leaving alone, but I thought, you know what? We need some extra grip on this thing. We don't want it slipping out of our hands when we're slaying Philistines. So let's give it a little bank line wrappage going on here. If you know somebody that's deserving of the Shamgar Award, perhaps you could make them their very own, or at least send them the link to this video. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one. Ha <laughs>